Hello and welcome to today's video. Today's video is another Shop My Stash. First, I am going to go through my thoughts on all the products I tested out in March, most of which I put on my face today so you all could see them. And then towards the end, I will go ahead and insert what I filmed the other day, which was me choosing the products for April that I would like to focus on. Anything related to my Shop My Stashes will be linked down below in case you'd like to watch another video after this one. If you enjoy this video while you're watching, please do go ahead and give it a thumbs up and let's go ahead and get into it. Alright, before jumping in, just like in February, I feel like for March I picked out too much. I always think I'm going to wear more makeup than I actually do. I've mentioned several times I wake up pretty early for work and I like to do something that's quick so I can get out the door. And I really leave my heavier makeup days, especially like a full face of foundation, for the days that I film. And occasionally on a day off, I may just mess around with makeup too and just play. But this month in March I did 25 different products. In April I did scale it back and I chose 19. I just wanted to mention that because you're going to hear me say more than once that I only use this once or twice and I really want to get more experience with every product in my shop my stash and I don't want to get overwhelmed. That's exactly what happens with project pans and that's what I'm trying to avoid in 2021. I'm going to start off with the two brow products that I tested out in March. I do just want to mention we are having a heavy rainfall day so if you hear any of that that's what's going on. I'm hoping I can sneak in a nap after this because I love falling asleep to the sound of rain. But anyway the first product I'm going to talk about is the Milk Kush Triple Brow Pen in the shade Dutch. If you've been here for a while I love the Milk Kush Fiber Brow Gel. It is one of my favorite brow products. Probably one of my favorite products in general of all time. I think I own it in three different shades just from needing to get different colors as my hair has changed over the years. Before this brow pen, upon initial use of it, I was a little scared that it was going to make it blotchy in certain areas, like it might deposit too much. It doesn't have the best reviews, and I think another reason for that is that it dries out. So this is definitely one that I'm going to want to store with the tip downwards. But as for the tip on here, it has three different little prongs. That sounds violent. I don't know. You guys can see what I'm saying. And that is supposed to help mimic natural natural brow hairs. And on my hand, it is a little bit light for me. I would probably get a darker shade if I were to buy this on my own. My sister did give this to me. She tried it out, didn't like it, and gave it to me to test out. Where I really like it is right up in here where my brows tend to be a little more sparse. But out here, my brows are pretty full and you can't really see this too much. I think this is more designed for someone who needs more of that fill-in. I will continue to use brow gel on the outer portion of my brows and then in the center towards the top of my brow or the front of my brow that's where I would use something like this where I do need more of those brow hair strokes. I just think out here it didn't do much for me but I did like this and I will continue to keep it in rotation. The next product I had picked up just on a whim at work and then I used it a couple of times and then didn't really get back to it, which is why I put it into the Shop My Stash. This is the Revolution Soap Styler. Revolution, I Heart Revolution, Makeup Revolution, that whole family of brands are pretty much famous for duping other products and sometimes straight up stealing or copying. And this I think is certainly a dupe for the Patrick Ta. This one is called the Shaping Wax and I did get this one in a tinted formula. I know this also comes in a clear, so I would be curious to see them compared side by side. But the way that you use this, and I have my brush here, it is dirty, but you just spray your spoilie and then go right in, pick up some of the wax, and then I will turn my brush as I'm putting it through because I like those big fluffy brows. It's so funny how trends change from year to year. It was just a couple of years ago that the very filled in dip brow was in. And then before that, it was the very thin brow. When I tell you guys, I had the tiniest brows. I tweezed, I would say it was a good half of my brow to get them into little U's. 
It was not a cute look, but and I think that's just what the trend was. Whatever you do at home, or if you do nothing at all, that's fine. But I just mean like the big trend, which you'll see on Instagram. And right now it's very natural with a little fill in and very fluffy. And I've been into it. I've said this before, but pretty much before quarantine, right before quarantine is when I had my last wax for my brow. So it's been over a year. Occasionally I will go in and just tweeze some bottom hairs that are straight but I really like this look. There were parts of my brows that grew in during quarantine that I did not know could, especially right up in here. That was always very uneven for me from side to side. So I've been digging the brows and experimenting with products that just give them hold. Often I will just use that NYX brow gel. I will use that on days for work. I don't even fill them in. And I get so many compliments, way more than I did when I was taking 10 minutes to do my brows. But anyway, for this product, I've only used it a couple of times. The only complaint I have with this and whether it is just the action of me twirling them up and I'm getting it onto my skin too much, it does flake up some dry skin in my brows. I have very dry skin, especially on my forehead and in the brow area. But some of it I do think may be the product and it's just the way that it lays. I think it happened today. This is another one that I'm gonna continue to just rotate in my collection, but I wouldn't say it's a new favorite or anything. Same thing for this guy too, going into base products. This is the Smashbox Photo Finish Vitamin Glow Primer. Do you guys like Smashbox primers? I know the original one, I think it's just called Pore Minimizing. I know that's a hit and a lot of people like, like it. It's kind of like their hero product. I was never a huge fan of it. It's very silicone-y and I never really liked the way my foundation laid on top of it. Maybe I'll try it now though. It has been a few years since I've actually given it a go and my skin's gotten drier over time and my pores are definitely more visible than they were then. So maybe, maybe I'll give it a shot and see if I like it. As for the Vitamin Glow, I don't notice a big difference in the texture of my skin or my pores or even really hydration. For me, this product is more like skincare with a primer. So you're getting some of the vitamin C in there. I wanna actually pull up their website to see what the claims are. And this is, wow, it's $39. I did not buy this on my own. I got this through gratis from work. So under what it is, it says it's a makeup primer with a lightweight gel texture infused with a fresh citrus scent. It's very light. I didn't pick up on it too much. It says it's loaded with vitamins B, C, and E and antioxidants for a natural looking glow, refreshes your complexion, extends your look, and re it reinvigorates skin. So no big claims for pore minimizing there, which a lot of primers do, I feel like many of them do. But it was fine, that all being said, it doesn't do the things that I normally look for in my primers. I can't say that it made my makeup last any longer. That's so hard to tell because I didn't test this on its own without a setting spray. Uh, but I don't really have any complaints with it either. I don't think it messed up my foundation or the tinted moisturizers that, that I used it with. Everything laid fine over it. Wouldn't buy this on my own, but maybe in time after going through it, I may change my mind. I remember this being such a surprise for me when I tested this out the first time, I did a full face testing out e.l.f. products. This is the Flawless Satin Foundation and it is in the shade Pearl. The reason why I was turned off by it, it's not because of the price point or because it's of from e.l.f. I love them. But at work at Ulta, I don't think I've mentioned that yet. If you're new here, when these sit, they really separate and they kind of just always gross me out on the actual display. And the colors sometimes seem a little bit off. But today, I think it actually looks really good on my skin. I did share this out. I put on the Catrice Prime and Fine with it and then I blended it all together with a sponge. And I love the way it looks on my skin. And I actually really like the shade match for me as well. This says on the back that it's oil-free and it's also a medium coverage foundation, which is right around where I look for. I usually do a light to medium. I don't regularly wear full coverage. And if I do, I tend to put it on pretty lightly. I've used this both with a sponge as well as with a brush. I do prefer to put it on with a sponge just to note that. But yeah, this is a nice foundation. I really like the way it looks. I think it wears really well throughout the day. Next is the concealer that I 
I barely used. This is from NYX. It's the Born to Glow Radiant Concealer, and this is in the shade Fair. I used this once, and I didn't like the look of it, so I did not reach for it again. I have been having the hardest time with my under eyes. The second I put on concealer, they're either creasing or all my dry skin flakes and bits come up, and they show through, and it gets very patchy, so I cannot play around with bad concealers. I did test out the Rare Beauty in my last Get Ready With Me, and that's what I'm wearing today, and I have really liked that one underneath my eyes, as well as my standby, my Holy Grail one from Flower Beauty. This I'm going to have to stick with using more on my face because I just don't like the way it looks underneath my eyes. It has a weird sheerness to it. Like, it looks like it's going to go on very thick, and then it does not at all. It gets very sheer, and the couple times that I used it, it did look really patchy. That's the tip. It's like a squeeze tube. This foundation, however, I will say the Born to Glow, that is a beautiful foundation. It has the nicest light coverage that builds up and it's very radiant looking. So that, if you have dry skin, I would definitely recommend. A setting powder from Flower Beauty. This I had just had in my collection for a while and I knew it had been a while since I gave it any love. When I reach for setting powder, it tends to be the hourglass one that I prefer. That one is just so finely milled and it never looks patchy underneath my eyes. And I have to say with this one too, it's pretty good. I didn't really have any issues with it. It never gave me a tough time. When I first put it on with my damp sponge, it does look like it has some yellowness to it. But once I brush it away, I can't really see that anymore. There is some fine like, and it's not glitter, but there's definitely like little shiny particles in it. But I don't think that shows up too much either. I hate when they put them in setting powders. I never feel like it actually does anything to blur or give luminosity. It always just ends up looking like sparkles underneath your eyes. And then for bronzer, I did the Milk Makeup Matte Bronzer in Baked. I love this. It is one of the only cream bronzers in my collection. It blends out beautifully and it never looks patchy, but it gives such a nice glowiness. I just put it right along here and then I will put it along my temples as well. I applied it a little bit differently though than what I usually do. You know how you just kind of get stuck in your routine and when you're doing your makeup, you're not always really thinking about it. So this might not be anything groundbreaking, but typically what I do is I will draw my line just like I would for contour and then I blend it out with a damp sponge. Today instead I took my sponge, not this one, I just grabbed it because it's in front of me and it is dirty, uh, but I took my damp sponge and I actually pressed it in to the bronzer and then applied it. I just think I got more control of how much product I was using and where it was actually going versus when I draw that line it's already there and I'm kind of trying to blend in all of the product and sometimes it just gets a little bit too messy. So I'm going to keep playing around with it like that. And then I threw in from Danessa Myricks. This is the Dew Wet Skin Balm in Morning Dew. I think this is the lightest shade. I believe there is five of these. This is my first product from Danessa Myricks. I got it through my Beautylish Lucky Bag this year. I did just pick up one of the color fixes because I could not help myself, but I think I'm going to be picking up some more during the Sephora sale. I think that's happening next week. And then towards the middle to the end of the month, once I have everything and can play around with them a little bit. I think I am going to do a full face of cream products. Perfect time spring going into summer. I love that dewiness, those spring looks. So if you would like to see that, do let me know below. And if you have any recommendations for products I should get for that video before the sale comes, I would love to hear them. But anyway, for this balm, the first time that I used this, and I think the second time too, I just didn't read instructions on it and I put it on underneath my foundation. I didn't have any trouble with my foundation going on top of it, but I couldn't really see it. And then I actually read the instructions and it said to just take a little bit and press it on on top of your foundation. Duh, I should have realized that because it is a balmy texture. I used this today underneath my highlighter on top of my foundation and it really helped to intensify my highlight. I think it looks gorgeous. Alone, it has, ugh, it's so pretty. I obviously shared this out quite a bit more before I put it onto my cheeks, but I just tapped it on. I did light tapping motions. I had no issue with it bringing up my foundation, which is always a risk, I feel like, when you're trying out new products. Let me swatch this. It's such a pretty like champagne-y ivory kind of shade. Back here I think you can get a little bit more with the lights actually versus when I try to focus it. Gorgeous product and I don't really have too many other things like it so I'm happy I have this in my collection. 
And then my other cheek products, I did two different blushes. I love blush and I'm always adding more to my collection uh, from Fenty. This is one of the cream brushes in Strawberry Drip. I bought two of these around the time that they were released. I bought them specifically to make a video, but it was during quarantine, coming out of quarantine, and I had taken a long break from YouTube and I never actually filmed that video. And to be honest, I didn't really pick these up much after that either. I think maybe once I had used this as well as the other shade that I got. This shade I put on today just with my fingertip. I didn't even use a brush and you can see it looks so much lighter. It looks really intense on my finger. So you can play around with how much pigment you're getting of these. I think I maybe used this three times during the month and the other two times that I used it, I did put it on over tinted moisturizer. Today though, I did not have any issues with it disturbing my foundation. I can always update later if I find that that happens at another point in time, but for now, this was nice. And then from Buxom, I have one of the Wonderless Primer Infused Blushes. I bought this during 21 Days of Beauty, not the past one that happened, but the one before. I think that was probably in the fall going into winter. And then I didn't even open this, so I knew it was time, and that's why I put it into my Shop My Stash. This is in the shade Dolly, which is one of their main shades that they do. It's in a lot of their lip products as well. These had always called my name at work. There's a really pretty sheen to them, but it's very skin-like when it goes on. So pretty. I think there's six different shades and I would like to actually pick up another one of these too. And then the last things for the cheeks was from Becca. This is one of the Shimmering Skin Perfectors in Moonstone. We all know Becca is leaving us, which is so sad. I think I have four or five of their Shimmering Skin Perfectors and I guess just because I can't buy them anymore, I might as well try to get some use out of them. I know I'm not going to do it though within a year. I have so many highlighters and they take so long to get through, but I just wanted to give them some love. It's a very easy wearable highlighter for someone with a fair skin tone. It can be built up in intensity or you can put it on fairly light too. I especially like this shade uh, above my cupid's bow and then also above my brows a little bit because it's not blinding. It doesn't look too obvious when I put it in those places. All right, moving into all things for the eyes. First thing, Thing is the Smashbox Always On Cream Shadow. I used this in my last video, the Get Ready With Me. The reason why I put this into my Shop My Stash is because I have been loving the hell out of it and I knew I was going to use it anyway. So I figured why not give it some attention and use it in a video too and talk about it a bit more. This is the shade Grage. I put this one in here because it's neutral and I knew I would get a lot of use out of it. But I did already go ahead and pick up two more shades. I got the Olive as well as the Rose and I think I want some more. I think I want some of the brighter ones. There's a really bright yellow and then a guava shade too that is gorgeous. As for this one, I love the tone of this. It's a very wearable cool tone for me. I tend to reach for more warm tones, but I can say with this too, if I pair it with a shimmer or something that it is warm, that comes out. And if I pair it with something that is more cool toned, it brings out that with it, which is really interesting. As for the wear of these, I will put the video up here of me using it if you actually wanna see it in a video. But the way I've been using this is I just apply it directly to my lid and then take an angled brush. I've been liking to do a bit of a wing with it, but I will bring it on with a wing and bring it all the way over. I really like the drying time with these. You have just enough time to play with it, really get it into the shape that you want, and then once it's set, it's set. But even if I've had to go back and I've made a mistake, I don't find that it makes any of my dry bits flake up, which does happen sometimes even with just regular shadows. And it is what I feared with this one. Excellent formula. And then getting into the three palettes, I think going forward, I am going to make a rule for my Shop My Stashes to only do one or two palettes. I just didn't get a chance to use all of these, especially with using the Smashbox, the cream shadow. That I favored more. And and I would put on just one of the shimmers from these two palettes with it on work days or days when I just wanted a quick look. Let's start with the Colored Rain because this, honestly, I did not use at all except for today. 
away. I was really hesitant about it. I had mentioned in my palette ranking video, my palettes I purchased in 2020, I wanted this palette so badly after seeing Jay Kissa use it. It's a little bit more pricey and it was recently reformulated or it was when I picked it up. It was made vegan. I saw so many rave reviews of the old formula. So I don't know if it's just the newer one, but this has been a struggle anytime that I've tried to use it. I did a palette bingo shortly after receiving it in the mail. And then I think I tried it one other time Time, and both times it was just a flop for me. And even just like you guys can see when I swatched these, specifically when I bought this palette, this squad shade was one that I was so intrigued by. I don't have anything this deep of a green. And then when you swatch it, it's so meh. That's the only way I know how to describe it. You expect that really rich green and it just doesn't come off. These are very dry feeling too. Very matte, very dry. I kept it pretty safe today. I did use it today though. I told myself I had to use it before this video rather than just saying, oh, I didn't get to it. Today I used the Cruisin', or no, the Crushin shade. I used Jet Set and then I used the Neo Blue as liner. I like how this looks for the most part. Up in here when it came time to blend, I used the lightest amount and I blended very slowly. I think that's where I got into trouble the first time that I used it. I thought I would just be able to throw it on. Everything would be able to blend okay and that did not happen. So this I just had to take a little more time with. I'm going to keep it out. I'm going to continue to play with it. I was just scared of it for a while. And then for the other two palettes, the Just My Luck from ColourPop as well as the Natasha Denona Camel. This one I did not purchase. I got this through my Beautylish Lucky Bag. Again, I think this was maybe in 2019 or 2020. I can't remember. The reason I put it into my Shop My Stash was because it had been a long time since I'd used it. No complaints. I don't think I did a full eyeshadow look with it, but I would just put down one of these shades as a base. And then I also paired this shimmery shade. It's called Copper Stone. That I would put on over top the Smashbox, the grayish, and it was a very easy pairing. And and looked nice together. And then for my Just My Luck from ColourPop, again, just been a little while since I used this palette. And I had thought with St. Patty's Day, maybe I would do like a big green look and that never actually happened. I did use this in my Get Ready With Me video as well. I know for sure I used those ch that Chances Are shade. Other than that though, the only things I used in this were the shimmers paired with the Smashbox again. No complaints, no issues. Really ColourPop's formula is fairly consistent consistent and I always have a good time with them. The price is right. Two liners I tried out, the NYX Epic Wear. These wear really well on the waterline, especially for a colorful liner. This one is in the shade Intense Teal. I think I have four of these that I've picked up. The only thing I want to mention with these is there are some that are metallic and it's not super obvious on the component which ones those are. I picked up one at one point that was metallic and I didn't realize it. Those don't don't wear for shit on the waterline. And then for this one from LA Girl, this is the Shockwave liner, the Neon Shockwave liner. I own all of the Neon Shockwave liners. That is my favorite bright liner formula and you cannot beat the price of them. They remain so vivid and so pigmented on my waterline throughout the day. And I was curious to actually test out the black to see how this wore throughout the day. I did not touch it up and I say I do my makeup maybe about an hour and a half ago. Go. And we're still pretty pigmented. There's just a little bit here that has faded and there is in the corner of my eyes, but I'd say that's pretty decent and fairly normal. My favorite long wear liner is the one from Milk, their black liner. That lasts like all day on me and it does not run. As for the two mascaras that I tested out, the first one being from KVD. This is the Go Big or Go Home. Again, gratis from work. And I have to say, I tend to avoid these kinds of mascaras now. I like wands that are made to elongate my lashes versus thicken. My lashes just get way more clumpy than they used to. I need a little bit of volume, but I like more length than anything and separation as well. So I reached for this once, thought it was fine. I didn't have any trouble with it flaking when I did use this, but I only used it once because I ended up loving this mascara. And this was probably my favorite of all of the Shop My Stash products that I tested 
tested out in March. This one's from Ilia. It is the Limitless Lash Mascara. I don't think I bought this either. I want to say it came through a FabFitFun. I think that's where it came from. I have a mini of this too somewhere. I don't know how that happened, but I love the wand on this. This one has a rubbery wand and it has two different sides. There is the side that lengthens. You can see it's longer there on this side and then shorter on the other. So when I'm applying it, I take that shorter side, apply that to the lash line, and then I roll up as I go through. And this really gives length to my lashes. I purposefully did not wear mascara. I wore mascara. I purposely did not wear false lashes today so you guys could see it on its own. I curled my lashes and then did two coats of this one. And I really love the way this makes my lashes look, but especially my bottom lashes, it really brings those out. No issues with flaking throughout the day or clumping. I feel like that would be kind of impossible with this one, the way those are separated. I think between this and my e.l.f. Keep Your Curl, I am happy with mascaras right now. And and then four products that I chose for March. I did scale that back again in April just because I just don't find myself putting on these types of products to go to work, to wear a mask. I just don't want to risk that transfer. And I know going into summertime, I'm going to be avoiding that even more. I have a little work makeup bag in there. I keep a balm and then I have one of the tinted lip oils from Tarte. That's about all that I've been doing for color. I did use for this one I had from Zoeva. This is a liquid lipstick. I think I either put this on in a video or I wore it when filming and that was the only time that I used this. It's in the shade Natural Aesthetic. It's a very pretty color. It didn't feel too dry. It was matte because it's a liquid lipstick but it didn't feel too drying on the lips and I had no issues with it or complaints. Essence the Stay All Day Lip Liner. It says this is waterproof. Did not test that out uh, but this one is in the shade because duh. This I feel like I could pair with a lot of different lipsticks. Slightly brown with a bit of a pink undertone and that's what a lot of my lipsticks look like. I did put it on today but I covered up most of it with the Juvia's Place Me also in my Shop My Stash and this one has more of a peachy undertone but I just wanted to get use out of both of them today. As far as the lip liner, not too dry. I don't feel like I'm dragging it across my lips. I hate that. <laughs> I hate that feeling. So it's fairly creamy but not too creamy to the point where I feel like the tip is going to break either would try out more of their lip liners. I know they make several different shades. And then the me from Juvia's Place, I already knew I really liked this shade. It has the perfect amount of peachiness to it. It's like just a little bit to make it something that's not completely neutral on me. And I really love this. I really like the feel of it too. It's definitely matte, but it doesn't feel too dry on my lips and it wears really well. Would love to pick up more of these from ColourPop X Raw Beauty Christy. This is one of the luxe glosses in the shade Glacier. This I think I used twice twice. I know I used it in the get ready with me. I'll put a little bit on now. I didn't want to put it on earlier because I didn't want my lipstick to dissipate. I bought this like if I saw this on a shelf and it wasn't a collab and it didn't have this cute mushroom packaging, I probably wouldn't buy this on the on my own. I just have other lip gloss formulas that I really love and I don't think the shade is one that it would have really called out to me. Although I think it's really pretty, I really just bought it because it was part of that collab. But this Shop My Stash did force me to use it, so I'm happy with that. And then lastly, I did two setting sprays. I always tend to do two setting sprays when I do a full face of makeup. One that is more hydrating and then one that is made to make your makeup stay on longer. So with these two, I think these are both are more for lasting power. I always end up saying powder. Power, the Milani, the Make It Last setting spray, but this is in the Fruit Fetish Collection in Mango Coconut. I'll talk about this one first. I have the regular Make It Last and I never reach for it. I don't know why because it's pretty good. Nice spray on here. It's not super fine. It comes out a little bit aggressive, so I just give it some distance. As far as the scent of this one, which is why I picked it up, of course, the Mango Coconut, it's actually pretty light. I'm tasting it right now. So while I'm saying that, it feels 
like a lie, but it is actually pretty light. It's not super, super strong. If you're not into scented products, I would probably just go ahead and get the regular Make It Last. But if you like a little something and you don't mind it, it's not overwhelming and it doesn't really last on the skin either. And then the last thing, which I did not love, was from Kula. This is the SPF 30 Makeup Setting Spray. I love this idea. If you have a setting spray you love with SPF in it, I would love to hear it because what happens is you put your sunscreen on in the morning, put on makeup, and then after those two hours that you're supposed to reapply, you already have makeup on. So something that you can spray on throughout the day if you know you are going to be in the sun later on, it's a really good idea. This one though, is not, it's not my favorite. For one main reason, this has so much alcohol in it, I wouldn't be surprised if it is one of the first ingredients. It doesn't actually say the ingredients on the back of here, but it, what it does say is there is a flammability warning, do not use in presence of open flame or spark. I don't know how much alcohol has to be in here to get that warning. This dries instantly. And that's how I know, besides the smell, how much alcohol is in here. There is no drying time. You can't see any droplets on my hand at all. And I do not like that. I like to have a little bit of drying time with my setting sprays. Like I don't wanna look like I'm soaked, but I want a little bit of dewiness so that I can go in with a sponge, maybe fix some areas. I like it when it has to dry down. I feel like it gives some time for my powders to melt in, even if it's only 10 seconds. And I don't like the way this one dries. I also really don't like the scent. It just smells like I'm spraying alcohol into my face and it doesn't feel good. Maybe I will use this up on my body, on my deglate and on my arms. I think that's what I'm going to do with it. So those are all my thoughts on the products that I tested out in March. I know some of them I need to give a little bit more love to, to give full rounded reviews on. So I will keep playing with them. But for April, I already selected the products. So I will go ahead and insert that here. All right, time to pick out some products for my April Shop My Stash. I had mentioned in my last couple of videos that I was planning on getting a new lip organizer. I literally just put this together and I'm pretty happy with it so far. I got them at Ulta. It's two separate pieces. Please do ignore my nail polish though. It was looking all cute before I went and chipped it trying to remove the stickers from here. But as far as palettes go for this month, I think I just want to pick two. Again, ignore any cords and my empties there that you may see. But what I had in mind to pick for this month is one of these palettes from Melt. Muerte, I haven't used as much as I have Gemini. I really enjoy both of them though. It's been a minute since I've reached for Gemini and I had it on my mind the other day. So I think I want to pull that one out. Muerte, I was thinking about doing both of them, but I might save that for another month. I kind of want to pull out something newer that I haven't used a ton. Like I'm thinking maybe one of the Animal Crossing X ColourPop palettes. I also have this from Viseart that I haven't played with a lot. I really enjoyed that the couple of times that I've used it. I think I will go with one of these. You know what? Maybe I'll actually just keep all of them in my Shop My Stash. And that way I can mix them up and use them together. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use those four mini palettes as well as the Gemini. And there are all the palettes that I have to play with. I literally just said I wasn't going to pick as much this month as I have in previous months, but I filmed the video with these and then I didn't get a lot of play with them. And like I said, I was already wanting to reach for Gemini. We'll see what happens if I can get a look with all of these, or maybe I can just combine them and use them together. Either way, I'll get more use out of them than I would if I don't put it in my Shop My Stash. As for this palette though, it is one of my favorites. It is so gorgeous. You can see I don't treat my makeup very well, but some of the tones in here are just so unique, like this mochi shade. It's such a cool green. And then I also really love Lorelei. It's definitely in the neutral category, but it's leaning more orange. And I just think it has the coolest undertone. The shimmers in here are also stunning. So yeah, I think I'll be happy with those. I'll have a lot of variety to play with. And then getting in to my blushes, bronzers, and highlights. The product I already had in mind for this upcoming month is this from Hourglass. I think I bought this in 2018 and I was obsessed with it, but I haven't reached for it in a while. 
It's the Lighting Edit Volume 4. It comes with two finishing powders, a strobe powder, a bronzer, a blush, and then a strobe blush. I specifically was obsessed with the blushes in here, but I never got a ton of use out of the bronzer or really even the top three shades. So I want to dip into this more in April. And I think I'm going to stick with just really using that bronzer throughout the month, but I might pick another highlighter just so I have a little room to play. I think I want to throw in this from Nabla. I've tried this a handful of times, but the first time I used this was in a video and I remember liking it, but I was a little underwhelmed. And then I tried it later on on damp skin. I used a setting spray and then applied this with a brush and I liked it much more. It has a very skin likeness kind of finish. So I want to play with this and I will throw this in as well to use along with the Hourglass palette. And then from Flower, I think I want to use a cream blush. We'll be getting into warmer weather and I love cream products year round but I think especially spring summertime I really love the look of bright glowy cheeks so I'm gonna do the melon shade I just swatched that very quickly you can get that to come on more subtle than what I just did especially when you apply it with a sponge but they are so buildable this formula is probably my favorite of any cream blush that I've tried and then getting into my drawers down here, if you haven't seen my last shot, my stashes, this has some liquid eyeshadows, also some single shadows, as well as my lashes and back stocks. I'm going to leave that closed for today just because I have so many options for shadows this month. And here is where I keep pretty much everything else. My polish just chipped off as I went to brush my hair back. So for my base, and this is where I want to keep it kind of simple, I already had this in mind from Bare Minerals, the Complexion Rescue. It's the Tinted Hydrating Gel Cream. It's just a tinted moisturizer. This is one of my favorites, and it usually lives up here in my favorites drawer, but I didn't want to forget about it for this video. I love this. The coverage is just enough. It's what I need for day to day. It never settles into my dry skin. It never looks flaky on my skin. It covers up redness really well. And I wear this in the shade 01, the opal shade. I recently remembered that I have a back stock of this below and I've just gotten out of the habit of using this on work days. I used to wear it religiously and now I really don't wear anything on my work days except for concealer, maybe a little blush and highlighter and then something simple on my eyes. I always have my brows on and some mascara, but I got away from doing my tinted moisturizer and I'd like to get back into that habit so that it doesn't go bad. I also don't want my back stock to go bad either. So I'm definitely going to throw this in there. So that's the only thing I'm going to do for my complexion rather than picking out a foundation. Like I said, I have that one from KVD coming to me. As far as setting spray, I'm going to grab this from Morphe. This is the Luminous Setting Spray. This was on sale a while ago. This is what always happens at work is I grab something because it's on sale. But I've never actually tried this. So I'll throw this into my shop, my stash. And maybe I'll put this back into the shop my stash. I skipped it in March, but it was in my February one. Same reasoning. Charlotte Tilbury can no longer be considered cruelty free or it's just kind of sketchy right now whether they are or not. But according to cruelty free kitty, they aren't. And then I also want to try the Auric product that is similar to this by Samantha Ravendahl. So I need to use this up. As for primer, I'm going to grab this, the Tatcha the Liquid Silk Canvas. I tested this a bunch around the time that I bought it, but I haven't grabbed it in a while, so I will throw this in. I'm going to skip on a setting powder. Reason being is this shade, the shade in the middle here from Hourglass I've used to set my under eye. It just gives some luminosity and it doesn't get very cakey. It's a very fine powder. Another reason why I need to get through that is I also have a full size here. Like I said, I was pretty much obsessed with these when I first got them, but then I just got away from using them. I'm enjoying my brow routine currently, which is really just using a tinted brow gel, either the one from e.l.f. or the one from Milk, and topping it off with the NYX brow glue. And then some days I just wear that by itself. So I'm going to skip any other brow product in April and move right along to mascara. 
I'm going to pull out both of these, the Milk Primer and then the Milk Kush Mascara. This, for a while there, I was actually using it in my brows before putting on a tinted brow gel. And that was before quarantine and before I stopped waxing my brows. So I felt like I needed this. But now my brows are pretty full. But maybe I'll try that again to see what happens. This mascara was one of my favorites for a while there. And then it just got replaced as I tried out new things. So I will throw that back into the rotation. And these will both go into the basket. And then liner for eyeliner. I pretty much always try to do something colorful and then something more neutral or just a black. I have this from e.l.f. that I've never tried. I bought that for my e.l.f. video and then ended up not using it. This has got to be almost dried out because I've had this for a while. So I will throw this in the Stila Stay All Day Waterproof Liquid Eyeliner. I just bought another one of these, but I bought the brown shade. And then I also bought one that is slightly green that's in here somewhere. There it is. I couldn't find it at first. The brown one I've kept in my work bag to do touch-ups at work. And then this one I've, I've used a few times as well. It's the Intense Jade. So I think I'll try to get through the black one. I'm going to do a brown liner from Flower Beauty. I know I like this, but I can't remember what I think about the longevity right now. This is the Forever Wear Long Wear Eyeliner in Brownstone. I really like pairing a brown liner with green, so I think this will go really well with the Gemini. And then coming up to lipsticks, I am going to skip a lip liner this time. I think I'm going to do a liquid lipstick, a lip gloss, as well as a lipstick. So these are just two different pieces. I bought them separately. I think they were like $30 each. I did use some points, which was nice. I might fuss around with the way I've organized it. Like I said, I did it for this video, so I did it fairly quick. But in the bottom, I put all of my lipsticks. I had to keep the packaging for this from Animal Crossing. These are the lippy sticks. And then I have some of the Jeffree Star Velour Liquid Lipsticks. And then on the top here, I have liquid lipsticks as well as glosses and treatments and balms. I was looking at this the other day. I remember really liking this, but I've had it for a while. I think I purchased this for one of my first drugstore virgins. This is from CoverGirl and it is the Baby Bite Lipstick. I thought it was such a pretty coral shade for spring. And I think it will also go well with, with the Flower Beauty Cream Blush. And then for a liquid lipstick. Oh, you know what? I forgot. I think I'm going to skip the liquid lipstick and do another lipstick. When I was cleaning and clearing things out, I have two of the Ludwig shade from KVD. One of them I threw into a project pan because I didn't have much left in it. And then I threw it into a drawer after that project pan was over and forgot about it. So this one's the full one, but this is the one I had in my project pan and there is barely any left in it. I'm sure it goes down deeper than that. I'll have to use a brush or something else to get it out of there. But I wanna get this out of my collection and I don't like to waste even though I have another one. So I will skip doing a liquid lipstick and do two lipsticks instead and then all we need is a lip gloss and i had while arranging these i was thinking of the one from tower 28 this is the cashew milk i used this in a video and really liked the shade of it and i think i threw it on one other time but that is it that is all that i've worn this i just kind of forgot about it so i'm going to throw this one in there as well this has enough pigment on it too that i can wear it alone without feeling like i need a lipstick or a liner underneath it so i think it would be good for work days if there isn't too much transfer so i will update you guys on that I just brought everything to the floor so we could go through it again, just to reiterate, make sure I didn't forget anything. So for my April Shop My Stash, we have a primer, the Flawless Filter from Charlotte Tilbury. I'm realizing I forgot a concealer, but I have a new one from Rare Beauty I'm still testing out and I have a bunch open. So I'll skip a concealer this month too and just enjoy the ones I already have opened. I have the Complexion Rescue from Bare Minerals, the Hourglass Ambient Edit Volume 4, the Gemini Palette from Melt Cosmetics, the Animal Crossing X ColourPop Collab, all four of the Baby Palettes, 
two liners, a longwear liner from Flower Beauty in Brownstone, and then the Black Stila Stay All Day Waterproof Liquid Liner. A highlight from Nabla, this is one of the skin finishers, skin glazings rather, in Ozone. The Milk Kush Lash Primer, as well as the Milk Kush Mascara. The Flower Beauty Melon Blush Balm. The three lip products I chose, the Baby Bite from CoverGirl on the top, followed by Ludwig by KVD, and then on the bottom, the Tower Gloss in Cashew. And lastly, the Morphe Luminous Setting Spray. And of course, I just got that gloss swatch on this basket. I immediately forgot that it was on my hand. But anyway, let me know in the comments your thoughts on my April Shop My Stash products. If you tried any of them, what do you think of them? Or if you have any suggestions on how to use these products, I would love to hear about them in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please do go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to see me and more of my remarks, please subscribe if you haven't already. I thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you and I will see you soon.